This is Roy City High School, and you're watching RCTV. Good morning, Roy City High School, and welcome back to another edition of RCTV. I'm Nisa Loretto. And I'm Tony Garcia. On this episode, we'll take an inside look into advanced planner of reading class as some of our students show off their cardboard creations. We'll jump with the varsity football team as they read children's stories to elementary school kids. We'll check in with Abby Stinson for our Thanksgiving break five-day weather forecast. And finally, we'll have a sneak peek at the Hamilton in 7 Minutes music video. All, All that, that and more right, right here, right, right now on RCTV. RCTV. When you think of math class, you think of equations, homework, and complicated tests. But that's not the case for advanced quantitative reasoning here at Roy City High School. Here's Shelby Dorsha with an inside look of a different way of learning. With 247 different classes here at Roy City High School, students are constantly finishing their homework assignments, studying for their tests, and taking part in extracurricular activities. But if you walk down to room C-235, Ms. Biggie's advanced quantitative reasoning classes, students aren't just learning on pencils and paper. These students are creating their own carnival games out of cardboard. This project kind of is the culmination of the probability unit. What the students are doing is they're taking all of the pieces that we've learned and that we've put together on paper and we're kind of putting it into real time. The project is based off two steps. Students must create written proposals for their own carnival style games based off something you might find at the Texas State Fair and then construct these games out of household items such as cups, bottles and of course cardboard. I really encourage creativity when it comes to this. It's really just an opportunity for them to put their hands on the math and to see that it's not all just paper and pencil. There's a lot of extra stuff that goes into it. In the process of completing their project, students use their organizational and research skills, develop better communication with their peers, and get to see their positive effect of their own work. So I figured it would be pretty simple and fun at the same time. All I did was I just took some saran wrap. So basically, so you fill the ping pong balls off here, so it's like a trampoline type surface, and then you throw it off and it bounces into one of the cups. And so it kind of adds like a, a different twist instead of just throwing it into the cups directly. This is my Plinko project. We used an anim Amazon box to do the outside of it and the little slots. And we got some popsicle sticks used as the pegs. Some students got their ideas from carnival style games, while others took inspiration from classic arcade games. Our idea was to make a mini Pac-Man. We went and took a cardboard box and we cut off flaps and hot glued it to be like a maze. And then we cut little tracks through the cardboard box to um, insert the ghosts, to move them around. And the idea is to get through the maze to the right ending while avoiding the ghosts. I used a planter pot and I used a stool and just some pieces of paper I found. All this stuff, I found all this stuff in my garage. And except for the paper and the box, and that stuff was already here. The old school model of passively learning facts and reciting them out of context is no longer sufficient enough to prepare students to survive in today's world. This is exactly why Ms. Biggie's method of project-based creative learning in the AQR class has been so beneficial to her and her students. For our CTV, I'm Shelby Dorsho. Coming up, we'll travel to the elementary schools and see our football players read to the children. But first, let's go to Abby with the weather. Hello, Roy City High School. I'm Abby Stinson with this week's weather forecast. To kick off our Thanksgiving break, Friday will be partly cloudy with a high of 78, a low of 62, and a slight chance of rain. Moving into Saturday, you will step outside to a clear sky with a high of 67 and a low of 43. However, there will be a 20% chance of rain in the morning. Sunday, just like Saturday, will have clear sunny skies with a high of 63, a low of 42, and a 0% chance of rain. Monday will be partly cloudy with a high of 64 and a low of 49, but there will be a 50% chance of late night showers. 
Ending the five-day forecast, Tuesday will be mostly cloudy with a high of 66, a low of 49, and a 40% chance of rain throughout the day. Back to you guys. Thanksgiving is about giving back to the community. Every Friday home game, our football players would go to elementary schools and read to some children. Here's Lindsay Miller and Elia Pashan with a story. For the past five years, the Roy City High School varsity football team has been participating in a reading program where they go to the elementary schools in the community and read to the kids as well as play with them and talk to them about football. We talked to a few of the players and a student to see how this program impacts the kids. As me, I grew up at Ford Elementary. I've gone to Roy City my whole life and I came up to Friday Night Lights and I loved seeing them. I felt like they were the Dallas Cowboys. Like that's what some of them compared us to was, oh, do you play the Cowboys? Do you play the Cardinals? They would just ask us those questions. And I thought th they look up to us like I looked up to them when I was little. I think we impact their lives a lot. Uh, they want to be us at that age. And so we have to set the example. I believe we did impact the kids and we also showed them that we're not the dumb jocks that everybody sees in the movies and that we do love and care for the kids and we love to give back to our community. When the football players come to read to me, it makes me feel like I'm important. It sets a goal for them, really. That goal to be a varsity football player one day, the one to wear that RC. Like, uh, I remember whenever I was, uh, whenever I was in sixth grade, uh, uh, we had a pep rally for the varsity team and uh, I fa wore my jerseys to school and I found somebody with the same number that I had and it, it, made, it set that goal, that standard for me to be a varsity football player one day, so it definitely makes an impact on them. I want to be a football player when I get to high school, but I'm a girl, so I thought I could. But when the football players came to read to me, it inspired me to chase my dreams of being a football player. Reading at the elementary schools not only impacts the kids, but also impacts the football players and the community as a whole. The reason why I see that the reading program is good for our players is because it allows them to see how important they are to the community and how important they are to uh, the younger kids in our school district and everything. And it also teaches them the importance of reading and the importance of education as they go through their, their schooling and everything. Um, other than that, I mean, I think it's just a great opportunity for our players to be seen in the community, to show that they're part of the community and that they are truly prideful of being RC Bulldogs. RC football team, thank you for inspiring me. Help us satisfy video that Hannah Grisham produced last year just recently hit 200,000 views on our YouTube page. And we're making another one. Here's a sneak peek. How does a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by Providence, impoverished and squalor, grow up to be a hero What's and a scholar? What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton. My name is Alexander Hamilton. And there's a million things I haven't done. But just you wait, just you, just you wait. Thank you for watching this episode of RCTV. If you want to see more of our content, you can go to youtube.com slash RCTV Teen News. For RCTV, this has been Nisa Loretto. And Tony Garcia. Signing, signing out. out. Have, Have a great, great Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.